Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from XVRAutomation.com and this is part 9 of our Android App Automation with Robotium series. And in this part, we're going to talk about locating controls of Android application in Robotium. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Locating controls using Robotium. So, what do I really mean about locating controls using Robotium? So the application which we are going to automate, the calculator application that we are going to automate in our case, we need to somehow locate the controls in the calculator so that we can work with that control. So there is no tools available in Robotium like Firebug or Developer Console which are available in web applications to locate the element. But we can locate the element by looking at the code since we already know how the code looks like in the application under test. And there are other tools as well like Appium Locator or Cylindroid Locator or UA Automator Locator which does the job. But in our case, in Robotium, we don't have such kind of locators. So we'll discuss about Appium Locator or Cylindroid Locator or UA Automator in upcoming videos of this video series which is completely a different series altogether but as of now just keep in mind that in Robotium there is no such locator available so controls properties can be found in the activity underscore main dot XML file remember in the part 5 and part 6 of this video series while we developed the Android native application we discussed about the activity underscore main dot XML file which is nothing but a collection of all the controls layout and it also has the controls ID, its text, its layout underscore height etc. As you can see here the Android colon ID has got the ID of the particular control. So the text box control, the text view control etc. So these are the properties of the controls, right? So in order to see this fully, let me flip to Eclipse. So this is our test project which we created in last video of this video series. So I'm going to navigate to our application under test and I will show you how the application's controls look like. So here you can see that the text view has got this ID and the edit text has got this ID right similarly for this edit text edit number two so these are the IDs for each and every controls and we can identify this control these control using the ID value which is specified here right so let me close this activity underscore main at XML file so now we are going to start using that in our Robotium test case that we are about to write right now. So before starting to write Robotium code We need to somehow import this into our project Which we have not done in our previous video of this video series So for that let me first add this or reference this Robotium into our project. So just right click your project and go to properties and here in the java build path add the robotium library so there is something called add external jars files so i'm going to click that and this will bring me up my robotium solo jar file which we have downloaded in our i believe in part 7 of this video series so i'm going to open that and then in the order and export you need to also export this robotium solo and underscore 5.4.1.jar file as well since if you don't export it it will throw you a different kind of exception so we will deal about that exception as well so I'm gonna hit OK so this will add the reference for my Robotium in my project so this is how the installation of the Robotium is all about and now the next homeworks of our Robotium we need to do which means we need to somehow tell to our project that this is how the Robotium is going to perform the operation into our application under test. So for that we need to create a 
constructor for robotium. So as you know in selenium there is something called as a web driver which perform all the operations. Similarly in robotium there is a class called solo. So you need to create a variable called solo and I'm going to create a private variable for solo and this solo as you can see it is coming from com.robotium.solo so I'm going to import that right and then we have already created this constructor for our class so just leave this as it is in the setup of our project which we created in our last video of this video series I need to instantiate this solo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate this solo as solo is equal to new solo off and here you can see it has different kinds of constructors parameter available the one which we are interested in is this solo instrumentation and activity so we need to pass the instrumentation as you already know in the last video of this video series we discussed about activity instrumentation test case 2 the same thing we are going to perform here as well so we need to pass the instrumentation which we are using in our test case at the same time which activity we are about to test so the instrumentation is nothing but you don't have to pass the whole instance of this class rather there is a method called get instrumentation this method will give or return the instrumentation that you are using in your particular class see you can see here it returns the instrumentation instance similarly you need to also pass the activity right so the activity you can pass using a method called get activity that simple it is right so if you pass these two you are fully ready with your robotium so this is what is the setup part of the robotium you need to instantiate your robotium into your class and you can instantiate your class and make things ready for robotium using just this one line I have declared this as a private variable because I'm going to use this variable solo in many of my methods which I'm going to write right now right all right so the setup is done and now the next part the main part of this video is to locate the element of our controls and then perform the operation right so for that so before starting to do that I'm going to open my Android so that it will keep on booting behind the scenes so I'm going to the AVD manager and then I will just start this uh, let me scale this to 4.7 it's okay so since this is a time-consuming process if you start this behind the scenes the Android emulator will keep on running and then while we run the test we don't have to wait again for this Android to boot up since it is already up and running all right see as you can see here the Android booting has just started all right let's not care about this this will keep on booting so the next thing we need to do is to write our actual test method which perform the operation of identifying the control and performing the operation so let's try to write a method for performing the addition operation so for that I'm going to write public void test add and then I'm going to write a try catch block as well so if there is any exception this will catch and throw me during the execution all right and then we are going to perform the addition operation in our calculator application so to work on the control we need to identify the controls ID so this is available in our calculators activity underscore main dot XML file so let's see what is the ID for this text box so which is nothing but txt num1 and here this one is txt num2 right so let's go and see the properties as well so here if I click so that text is mm, 
all right what is the actual stuff I think it is not txt number one okay I'm sorry I just messed up the txt number one is the text view but we are interested in the edit text so the edit text is edt number one similarly edt number two is for the next text box so this is how you can identify the control so in order to get this particular control and work with there is a very super simple option available in the robotium which is nothing but get view this is the method which you can get the view of a particular control so everything in our android they call it as view in terms of robotium so there is something called solo dot get view so you can see this is a method so you can pass the id of the control in this particular method so if you pass it it will still work fine that's it so what to pass in this get view you can of course pass it like this and you can just perform the operation in this one as well so like this and then you can just perform the you can just perform the operations like entering the text into the control but how to enter the text you should explicitly tell the code that this get view is actually returning a type text box so you need to cast that so instead of doing this way what i am going to do is i am going to use a strongly typed way so the strongly typed way is nothing but we can directly call the r dot id dot edit number one which we used while writing the code of the calculator application which you can see here like this right we can directly call this way also so for that what i'm going to do is i can directly write solo dot get view of r dot id and now you can see that r is not actually coming so for that what i'm going to do just press control one oops so it is not coming maybe i can directly type import com dot example dot calculator dot see you can see there is an r class as well so i can directly import this particular class and now the r is there so now if i put r dot and you can see the id is coming right and then r dot id dot if i put dot right now you can see all the id is popping up for me and this is how you can perform the operation of directly getting the id of your application under test and perform the operation and this way of doing or writing the test cases is called as white box testing in robotium there is another way as well the one which we did previously by passing directly the id name like double quotes edt number one this is called as black box testing right so since you don't know what is the application under test reference you can directly pass the double quotes and just pass the id name there but since you have referenced the project you can also get the id and whatever controls type it is you can directly pass in here as well so this is called as white box testing in robotium you can discuss more about white box testing and see the whole code in my executeautomation.com website as well right so i'm just going to put dot right now so we know we're going to work with edit number one so i'm going to select that one and then as i told already we need to somehow tell that this view which we are returning is of type edit text so for that i'm going to cast this to edit text and this is going to surely throw me an error so press control one uh, it's not coming so for that i can directly go and explicitly declare that import android 
dot widget dot edit text um, and next pass this edit text as txt val1 all right and then i'm going to do the same thing for my next text box so i'm going to pass one more value so txt val2 and instead of edit number one i'm going to choose edit number two all right right and then we can run the code and see if this code is working fine or not so let's just try to run this code and see if it is working fine or not so in order for this code to execute what we need to do is just right click this calculator project calculate test project and then there is something called run as android j unit test so if you select this this will start running your project so let me unlock this android and we'll see if this code is running fine or not all right the application is opened it performed nothing the reason is we have just identified the controls here but we have not typed any value in that so that is our next operation so right now we could know that the test is getting passed and it could able to identify these two controls which is available but the next operation is to perform the operation in that particular control so for doing that we need to do something there is something called solo dot enter text of the control just nothing but the txt val1 and the text is let's say 20 the 20 should be in double quotes that's what the error is all right similarly i'm going to add one more value in txt val2 and the value is 22 so i'm going to save this and now if i just try to run the same calculator application once again all right it opens the calculator and it's typing 20 and 22 and that's it so it is doing its job right now which is great so in the next video of this video series we'll talk about writing a very simple code to perform the complete operation right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day